Hey, Eric, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Um, you know, you guys were able to get that uh, kind of dramatic victory last year at, at uh, Minnesota. They've, you know, they're undefeated at home this year, just even without fans. Like, just what about kind of the unique nature of the barn makes it such a tough place to play at? Um, it's definitely, you know, unique, as you explained. Um, it's one of the few courts that, you know, it's kind of elevated off the ground a little bit. It's like kind of like you're playing off the ground a little bit. So I kind of find that unique about it. Um, and, you know, just, you know, obviously the way we won last year, you know, makes it a little bit even more unique and special in terms of, you know, us going there and, you know, knowing what we did in the previous years, just trying to, you know, come out with a win. And from your experience with, you know, against him in the past, just what makes Marcus Carr, you know, such a tough guy to, you know, guard? Um, just his, you know, shiftiness. Um, you know, he can go left or right. Uh, he can shoot going left or right. Uh, you know, he competes. And uh, I think they go as he go. You know, if he's playing pretty well, then I think, you know, the guys kind of feed off of him. And, uh, you know, he's definitely a tough competitor, so I'm looking forward to, you know, playing against him. We'll go to Emily Giambavo. Hey, Eric. Um, yeah. Even before you got hurt, you were playing off the ball a little bit more. Um, how, how do those two roles kind of change things? Or how, how, how does your role change from playing point to playing the two? And, and what do you kind of like about uh, each of those spots that are different? Um, I mean, they kind of, you know, similar in a way, the way, the way we kind of run our offense. You know, a lot of our positions are interchangeable. Um, I've played with Anthony, you know, so it's it's kind of, you know, nothing really new in terms of just playing on or off the ball. Um, you know, Hakeem has been doing a great job, you know, you know, with the ball in his hands. And sometimes even Daryl runs the point or, you know, Aquan will run the point. And, um, you know, our offense allows different guys to, you know, have that position and, you know, just get our offense started. So uh, for me, it's not really much of an adjustment, you know, uh, just going out there and playing basketball. And then I was going to ask specifically about Hakeem, um, especially you kind of getting to watch those two full games from the sideline. What what impressed you about his ability um, to facilitate and, and play that position? Uh, more so than anything, just not turning the ball over um, and how comfortable he looked. Um, you know, he didn't look rattled. You know, he stayed composed. And uh, for his size, I think that's a, you know, a unique spot for him, being as tall as he is and, um, you know, his his, his – his eye for the game is, is, is special. You know, he can see the game from different levels. And, uh, you know, I, I trust him a lot, you know, with the ball in his hands. We'll go to Wes Brown. Hey, Eric. So, obviously, um, in the Big Ten, a lot of teams are, are really successful at home. And Minnesota's, you know, one one of the programs doing that, doing really well this year. Um, when it comes to preparing for road games, has anything sort of changed with you guys? And maybe does COVID throw in something else with the fact that there's no fans? Um, COVID definitely, you know, has, you know, brought different challenges and circumstances in terms of playing without fans. Um, I think the fans do have a unique aspect and play into the games and, um, you know, for us, I think, you know, just not worrying about that, you know, as much as we can and just going out there and uh, bringing our own energy, you know, to the games and stuff like that, feeding off each other. Um, you know, going to Minnesota and, you know, just all of our road games, you know, people do play well at home. Um, you know, we've been able to get two wins on the road this year against top 10 ranked teams. So, um, you know, just trying to go in places and, you know, just compete you know, the best way we can and stay in games. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to going to Minnesota and compete. We'll go to race 11. Hey, Eric, uh, Mark just told us that you guys watched 37 clips from the Michigan game in that film session. I was just curious, which film session was worse to uh, watch, the one after Iowa or the one after Michigan? Uh, Iowa was Iowa. Um, Although we lost to Michigan, um, we did have, you know, a couple, you know, good things to come out of there as, or as certain things like we could build off of from that loss. Um, you know, I it was just terrible. Um, what does he usually talk about in those in those film sessions, whether it's good or bad? Um, it's one of those things where you got to be there. You know, it, I don't think it's 
uh, thing that I could really explain. Obviously, just point out things that we can get better at um, as a team, you know, not trying to, you know, beat people down in that way, but just, you know, showing that we could do more. And, you know, um, it's definitely one of those things you got to be there to just get a full grasp of what's going on. And we respond to it, though. It's not like one of those things where, you know, he's just beating us down. You know, it's a thing where, you know, he shows us where we can improve and, you know, we go out practice and get better. We'll go to Alex Flum. Hey, Eric, you mentioned, uh, you know, those two road wing wins against ranked teams, but I know you guys have uh, also had your fair share of games where you've played high ranked teams, just like you guys were just talking about with uh, Michigan and Iowa, and it didn't go well. But um, I guess what you guys have really proven is that, you know, any game you're going to have have a shot in it um, and, and bring your best. What is that the mindset you guys kind of enter games with? How, how do you guys enter the mindset when you're playing these tough opponents in the Big Ten, especially when you're going out on the road to do it? Um, we definitely know we could win the games, you know, uh, firsthand. You know, it's never one of those things where we go in there expecting to lose or, you know, just trying to stay in the game or, you know, anything like that. Um, we always go into the games, you know, prepared to win. Uh, coaches do a good job of setting us up to, you know, play for a win. Um, so definitely, you know, going to this game, you know, we're definitely going in there to, you know, win a basketball game. For our last question, we'll go to Henry Malone. Hey, Eric. Um, in regards to the, the groin injury, uh, can you just talk about how you've sort of been progressing with that and how close you feel to uh, 100%? Um, it's definitely is a process. Um, you know, uh, I'm definitely getting close. Uh, it's not, I'm not using it as an excuse to, you know, any type of way that I'm playing or, you know, in the future, I'm not going to use it as an excuse. Um, if I'm out there, you know, I'm out there because I feel like I can play. Um, I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm this percent today, so I played this way or I'm back to 100 percent or anything like that. So if I'm if I'm able to go out there and play, then, you know, in my mind, I'm 100 percent. So, um, you know, if anything flares up, you know, I definitely, you know, our trainers have definitely been, you know, helping me and, you know, staying on top of it, um, being so it's fresh and, you know, recent. Um, you know, but I definitely won't be out there with the guys, you know, sending out those two games. Um, you know, it was a different perspective, but, you know, I wouldn't be out there and play. And, you know, uh, with our games coming up, you know, I'm looking forward to going out there and trying to compete to my best. Thanks for joining us, Eric.